We can all sing, sing, sing. <laughs>
for him. He had heard about people having having jailhouse religion. Jack, you know about that. Uh, and and he said he he said he just wasn't he just wasn't gonna do that. And uh, he said the guy kept on at him and kept on and said they were having a worship service one night and said the guy said, Come on and just go. Said you can you can sit at the back and won't nobody even know know you there. He said he went in and said that preacher knew he was there because he preached to him the whole the, the whole night. Said he worked him over. And ultimately he accepted Jesus as his Savior. He wrote the first verse and the chorus later on that night. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. And he was in jail. After he got out of jail, him and his brother wrote the other, the other verse, verse, verse to it. And they've been preaching and uh, singing singing gospel ever since and that was years and years and years ago. So, so beautiful story to a beautiful song. Amazing Grace, my chains were gone. I'd say let's sing Amazing 
grace that he can right to amazing grace. My chains are gone. I have Al, the works. Al was sitting over there and there and laughed because he knew that wasn't the song I said. <laughs> That's how you found it. But, but, but we that. just sang it. Yeah. If I leave this world of sorrow
bringing us here this morning. See which ones that couldn't make it. Let them know that we're thinking on them and praying for them. And as we're gathering up on this special occasion in a few weeks, we also thank you for your son that you sent to us to die on the cross so that we might be forgiven for all our sins because we believe in him. Amen. And in his name we all pray, amen. 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 Well, I got a, a confession I got to make. Oh. Uh, we're going box? <laughs> I'm going to make this an up front, Bobby. Uh, I usually let Travis preach whenever I end a series, and I try to do them within a month so that he gets to preach about about once a month. But y'all know he just he just preached week four last. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, I told him I said go ahead and be prepared because Jude is not but twenty eight verses, and uh, it's not going to take long. It'll take. One sermon, and I'm gonna preach. I'm gonna preach through it. I have studied all week long with that intent to preach one sermon today. It ain't happening. I sit down to read over my notes and everything that that I had, uh, that I had studied this 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 week, and I couldn't get out of verses one, two, and three. I mean, I could preach on the first verse. Amen. So y'all open your Bibles or turn in your to your Bible app on your on your cell phone, whatever you do. And we're gonna take a look at the book of Jude. Now I want to give you a little background on it. Jude is move this thing. I don't know why there ain't enough room up here today, but I keep backing into that stool. I need room today. I'm going to run around some. Jude is the English form of the name Judas. Uh, I'd often thought of all the people in the Bible, why you, you I don't think I've ever known anybody. I, Agrippa was my best best friend. Agrippa was a king and he rejected Christ in the Bible. But Agrippa Dubay was named, his name was was taken from 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 that. People have used Bible names for their for their children throughout the ages, but you never hear of anybody named Judas. You know? And I thought with all the all the people that we do use Looks like somebody, but I know some people named Jude. I didn't know until I began this study that Jude, just like Pastor Juan over here across the road from us, his name Juan is John in English. If he was, if 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 we was actually speaking to him in in our English language, we call him Pastor John. But he's Pastor Juan. So the English version of the probably Greek name Judas is Jude. All right. He was the brother of James. You know the book of James in, in the Bible. So he was the brother of James. He was also the half-brother of Jesus Christ. Now, that's important, and you're going to see why in just a moment. Uh, this was probably written somewhere between 65 and 70 A.D., so about 70 years, 65 or 70 years after Christ had been put, you know, after Christ was, was, was born. So uh, around 30, 35 years 
after Christ died, Jude wrote this. He wrote it, now listen to me, he wrote it to an autonomous church body. Now that's important. We look at the books of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and one of them was written to an individual. But 1st and 2nd John was written to another autonomous, not independent, I'm not saying independent, but I'm saying autonomous. The reason that autonomous, we, we believe that churches should be autonomous. You come to Cowboy Church, you either got to believe it or start believing it, okay? There's nobody over us. You don't like what goes on in Cowboy Church, who do you go to? Get, get on your knees and pray about it. Talk to God, okay? There's nobody, there's no group, no association, no convention, no denomination that's over us. And, that, and uh, most Baptist believing churches that I know of are established that way. They are autonomous. What we decide is what we decide. And when we decide to do things as a group, that's the way we do them. Amen. And there's no, you know, we've got a cafe on our property. Do you know another church in Aiken County that has a cafe? That's ours. Can't nobody say we can't have it. Amen. Okay? All right. We're autonomous. That's why that's important. Jude, well, let's read, let's read verses 1, 1, 2, and 3, and then we'll come, come back and, and break, them, break them down. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Cool, right? Mm -hmm. All right, verse 3. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith. What does contend mean? Jack, have you ever had to contend? You ever had to fight somebody? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Contend means fight. Jude is calling on us to fight for the faith. Not, uh, they, they voted on this. Ain't nothing I can do about it. Well, it is. God's word said fight for the faith. Amen. All right. Cont I lost my place. Contend for the faith that was once and for all entrusted to the saints. Okay. I want to ask y'all something. Who here today is the same? Every one of them. Every believer. Yeah. Every believer is a saint. Yeah. yeah. I used to have a friend, he's gone on to glory. When he referred to somebody that he knew was a church member, he'd say, you know, the saints that ain't. <laughs> and that's what that's that was that was the way he referred to it. The saints that ain't. Actually, all of us are saints mm -hmm. that ain't. We don't always live up <laughs> Amen. to what this word tells us tells us to. But we are the saints. You don't have to wait until some church makes you a saint. You don't have to wait until you get to glory. You know, nothing like that. You are a saint. Praise God. Wow. Amen. I didn't know that. All right. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James. Okay. As, if I was going to write Bobby a letter I would, and say it's official, then I'm going to send it to him on Cowboy Church, Cowboy Church letterhead. It's got up at the top. 
Catboy Church, it's got our address, it's got our uh, email address, all of this is on there. And then I type in the date, and then I say, Dear Bobby. Well, they didn't have all that back in those, those, those days. And there were a lot of Judases around. It was a really common name. So he had to say Jude, and then he had to tell them which Jude. He could, why didn't he just say Jude at Jerusalem? Because there was a lot of them in Jerusalem, okay? So he begins to describe himself. He says, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. And then he goes on to say to those who have been called. We're going to come back to that. Jude. Jude, the word that he used was a bond slave. It was more than just a servant, okay? If, say, say I tell, oh, I tell Bobby out there today, Bobby, you know, I got something going on. I need to borrow it. $50. Can you let me have $50? I'll pay you back next week. I promise I'll, I'll pay you back next week. And Bobby says, well, I got to buy feed and hay. And, but okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let you have it. But honestly, I need this back next week. Okay, uh, I, I'm expecting some funds to come in. I'm going to pay you back. Well, next week rolls around and the check ain't in the mailbox. You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, it just ain't there. I cannot pay Bobby. It's not that I don't want to. I want to pay him. I promised him. I gave my word. I want to pay him. But I ain't got $50. It ain't like I can go get $50 from somewhere else and give, and give to him and pay him and then pay him. Pay them. I don't even have, have any other place I can go. But I promised him I would pay him $50. So I go to him and I say, Bobby, I owe you $50. And I really intended to pay you today. But I, buddy, I just don't have it. Do you suppose I could come down there to, to the farm and work for you a couple of days? to pay that $50 off because I don't see any way in the, in the future that I'm going to have it anytime soon. And you said you needed it this week. And he says, all right, be there at 6 o'clock in the morning. Bobby goes to work early. And I get out there and he says, I got to feed the horses. I've gone down there when, when he was when, when he was when he was sick, so I basically know what to, what to do, and I start feeding them horses, and then I got to give all of them all of them hay. He's got a load of hay coming in. It's got to be it's got to be stacked up. He had to go buy that feed. He told me about this feed. There's all kinds of, of stuff. Now, Bobby works. He don't work. He don't punch a clock. He works from can to can. So when Kent rolls around this late, and he's working hard that day, and I say, Bobby, what time do you want me here in, in the morning? He said, well, we got fences we got to fix. We got horses we got to exercise. Why don't you come in about 6 o'clock? <laughs> so I show up another day. All right, the point is that I've gone down there and served Bobby as a slave. I was a servant to him for two days. He don't owe me a dime because he'd already paid me, okay? He'd already done something for me. So he don't owe me anything extra. I just gave him two days, and it was my choice. It was my idea. That's what a bond slave is, okay? That's what a bond slave is. When Jude described himself, he says, Jude, 
a bond slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. He never once mentioned that he was half-brother to Jesus Christ. Why? Because he held the relationship and the position of a bond slave higher than that of being a half-brother to Jesus. He made a choice to be a bond slave. It was choosing on his side. He chose to follow Christ. What did he have to do with being a half-brother of Jesus Christ? Absolutely nothing. It was random. I really don't want to use the term change because God has a plan. But it was random. And there were other half-brothers to Jesus Christ. Okay? He held the position of bond slave to Jesus Christ in a higher position than being a half-brother. How many times have you known somebody or heard of, of somebody that's the brother to somebody famous and they play off of that all the time? Oh, yeah. You know, well, I'm so-and-so's brother. You know, that makes me somebody. Well, really it don't, you know? You just randomly happened to be a brush. You know? <laughs> but being a bond slave to Jesus Christ is a high position. Do you value yourself as a bond slave to Jesus Christ? Alright, he goes on to say uh, let's see I'm trying to trying to match up my notes to my to my uh, all scripture uh, he he talks about being uh, or it says uh, t t to all those who have been called who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ. The word keep in Jude is a key word. It's a very important word. He mentions it five times. He used the word kept. It, uh, I think in the, uh, in the King, King James it uses the word preserve. Now, uh, Dr. J. Vernon McGee called to our attention that there's two ways today to preserve things with vinegar or with sugar and he said much to his sorrow many of the saints he sees today appear to be partially preserved by both of them are you a vinegar saint or are you a sugar saint? But he says that they're, they're, they're kept. What, what can you do to be unborn? You say, well, I can take my life. Yeah, you can commit suicide. Does that make you un unborn? It just makes you dead, don't yeah, it? Yeah, that could yeah. be born hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's no way to be unborn once you're born. South Carolina is on the verge of passing a heartbeat bill. Pray that it passes. Amen. They say Amen. That, it'll, that it will pass our house, the representative fairly easily, it's going to have a problem when it reaches the Senate. Pray that they will pass it. Yes. Put your stuff on Facebook. Go to Bill Taylor's uh, 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 
Facebook page and he's got information on there. Support him. Let him know you support him. South Carolina needs a heartbeat bill. We need more than more than that, but that's a great step. Okay? Those are precious little babies. Precious little babies. God don't need to do. Yeah. He don't, and you can't un, unborn them. All you're doing is killing them. I don't care what anybody says. At any point, you're just killing a baby. You can't be un, unborn. How do you get unsaved? You can't. Jesus says that once you're saved, that your name is engraved on his hand. Praise God. Can you imagine Beth Johnson Perry, Beth Driggers Johnson Perry, <laughs> is engraved on the hand of Jesus. Marsha Clark is engraved on the hand of Jesus. Jackie Cooper is engraved on the hand of Jesus. Bobby Schofield, Lisa Dykes, Lynn Kirkland, Ann Kirkland, Travis Perry. <laughs> I was going to say, I better be on there. <laughs> is engraved on the hand of Jesus. Amen. How do you, you know, you can have a tattoo removed. Yeah, you know, the Bible don't say it's tattooed on the neck. It ain't just written on the hand of Jesus. It's not tattooed on the hand of Jesus. It's engraved in His hand. Can't get it off. That scar tissue won't ever go away. Amen. You can't get unsaved. Amen. You might have just had an emotional experience. You might have walked out because everybody else did. You know, there's a lot of things that could have could have happened, but I believe with everything in me, either a person saved or they're not. Amen. There's Amen. no there's no in between. It's like either you're born or you're not. Amen. You know, either I'm standing here or I'm not. That's right. You know, I'm not partly here and partly somewhere else. You know. I'm either saved or I'm not saved. Amen. Jude says that we're kept. By who? What keeps me? I mean, that ain't much to me. Ask me. If I had to vote on good people and bad people, I'd vote for all of y'all over me. Because I know me. I know this heart. Help by Jesus Christ. It's nothing, it's nothing I can do. It's not because of what I do. It's because of what Jesus did on that cross 2,000, 2000 years ago. It uses the term called. Now we often say that an evangelist, a pastor, a pastor is called. But you know y'all are called too. Amen. That's right. If you're a believer, you're called. That's right. You're called and you got a purpose. That's right. You were born for a purpose and you're born again for a purpose. Amen. You're called because you're all handsome and beautiful and you have so much ability and we're all such wonderful <laughs> singers, right? <laughs> have you listened to our songs? <laughs> Amen. We're getting better. We're getting better. We enjoy singing, but we were definitely not called to sing for our ability. Amen. Well, Grandma said it was a joyful noise. It's a joyful <laughs> noise. Right. That's right. That's right. And it is. Who Jesus calls, he keeps. Amen. John 15, 16. Amen. We're kept. Revelation 12, 11 says that they overcame because they were so handsome and beautiful and such wonderful singers and they were all so smart. Is that what the Bible says? No. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Revelation 12, 11. Amen. 
It's not what we do, it's what Jesus did. It's all about him. He saves us, he keeps us saved, and he's going to take us to glory. Amen. And it's all his doing. Amen. John goes on and says, Mercy, peace, and grace, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Amen. Mercy. Mercy proceeds from grace. I'm going to tell you on Beth right now. I want to tell you, we had a terrible Thursday. It was a good Thursday, but it was, I mean, we were getting it from the time we showed up until we went home that night. It was one thing right after the other. Travis and I had a meeting. Beth was at the cafe. She had to go take care of her grandma. We had to pick up food. We got here. Travis, all, all, all during this, they were swapping positions at the cafe, okay? I mean, all this going on, you just you just can't imagine, okay? It was all happening. It was chaos. Yeah, I can I can tell it to you. It makes much more sense than it did, did Thursday. Mm -hmm. Beth was on her way back from grandma's. She was speeding. Yeah, well, she was driving the speed limit, but it was during school hours. No. Through a school zone. She got stopped by the police. She was in a hurry to get back here because Travis had to leave to go to his job on the bus route. Okay? All this is happening. And the food pantry. And the food pantry. We still sort the food. We wasn't through with that. Trying to deliver food. Divide it up. You know, all this stuff happening. Okay? She's on the way back. Speeding through a school zone. And a policeman stopped her. She the preacher's wife. Okay? Oh, I'm well, speeding. No. She knew she was guilty. She was sorry. She wasn't paying a, attention. She was in a hurry, and she drove too fast through a, a school zone. He probably could have charged her $275 or more. Easy. He wrote her a warning. Travis, she texted him in the midst of all that. Travis and I started praying immediately. God, she was feeding. She was in her. She didn't have to tell us she was feeding. We knew she was. Yeah. She was late getting back here. That cop came up. He gave her a warning. That was mercy. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Okay? Mercy is not giving us what we deserve. Thank you, Jesus. Beth deserved to find it. I, I didn't want her to have it. Travis didn't want her to have it. But I deserved it. You know, she deserved it. And by her own admission, the cop told her, just slow down. <laughs> you know? And she came on back, but she received mercy. She didn't get what she deserved. When the Bible tells us that it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. My buddy Ray Elder stood before God this week in judgment. And God looked at his life. Not just since he got saved, since he became a preacher. He looked at his whole life. And God said, and Jesus said, wait a minute, Father, he's mine. Amen. And he didn't get what he deserved. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want Jesus to say, wait a minute, Father. He's mine. I don't want what I deserve. Amen. You got the receipt on this one. Huh? You got the receipt on this one. <laughs> That's right. We got the receipt, Bobby. Amen. We got the receipt. That's, whoo, that was preach. Amen. All right. Love, mercy, peace, 
peace is the result of the experience in the grace and mercy of God. Did you have peace after you got back here? After you got a warning ticket? In tears. I yeah. was in peace. You was in Thank tears, God. but you had peace. Yes. Yeah. Duh! <laughs> you know? I, I don't want what I, I deserve. What Bobby just said, we got to receive. Amen. We know how it's going to end up. We know what God's going to Gone, 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 do. We have the peace that is the result of the experience in the grace and mercy of God. Love. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Love. That's the motivation for everything that God does. Everything. Mm. Mm. Everything. We got, I was going to preach 28 verses today. It's already too late and I've got through three of them. So y'all want to stay all day and most of tomorrow you want me to start preaching on next week. We'll go ahead and pull us up some more blow up mattresses, <laughs> coupons, we put them on here and come on out. We got food in the engine. We got plenty of food and shower. <laughs> and I don't know about that shower. <laughs> Let's bow our heads for just a minute. If you're here today or if you're on Facebook or YouTube and you can't say with complete confidence that I know that I've got the peace that comes from accepting God's grace and mercy. I want you to pray a prayer right now. God, I'm sorry for my sins. I turn away from my sins right now. Not only do I turn away from my sins, but I turn to Jesus. I give my heart to, to, to you, and I make a commitment to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Father, I know that because of what Jesus did, I'm going to spend eternity with you in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, that I know that I'm saved. If you prayed that, that prayer, I don't want anybody to look up or anybody looking around or anything, but if you just prayed that prayer, I want you to just slip your hand up and put it back down. Praise, praise God, praise God. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, I want to ask you to send me a private message. I want to know more about receiving Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I'll answer you today. Father, we just thank you for this, for this day. We are so thankful for the bondservant of Jesus Christ by the name of Jude and for the words that he speaks to us in truth and in love today. We give you all the praise for everything that's going on here today. And we, praise, we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Uh, next week we're going to continue. We're going to talk about apostasy. And apostasy is a willful turning away from Christian beliefs. We're going to see how Jude intended to write a letter to this local autonomous church body to talk to them about our common salvation. He was, I believe that it, it was his intent to say something like, I'm not special because Jesus was my half-brother. I got saved just like you do. 
and all of us get saved the same way. Amen. All we know is that he was going to write to them about our common salvation. But the Holy Spirit changed him and said, I've, I've got to write to you about apostasy, a willful turning away from Christians, from Christian belief. It was a little cloud in the sky 2,000 years ago, and we're in the midst of a hurricane right now. Amen. Amen. I'll see y'all next week. Let's pray.